50 years ago, our world was at a critical junction. Conflict was gripping the Middle East, and two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, were in the thick of the Cold War. That was the backdrop and impetus for the summit at Hollybush. During two days in June 1967, President Lyndon Johnson and Soviet Premier Alexei Kosygin met at the Holly Bush Mansion, the president's home at then Glassboro State College. The college had a role unlike that of any other campus, and Glassboro became the focus of worldwide attention as the two leaders met. Their goal was to address the Arab-Israeli Six-Day War, which found the world giants on opposing sides, and to thwart a possible nuclear confrontation that could prove disastrous for mankind. At 6.34 p.m. on the 22nd of June, a modest stone house in Glassboro, New Jersey, suddenly became a permanent part of the world's history books. The White House announced that President Johnson had invited Chairman Kosygin to meet with him at 11 o'clock the next day at the home of the president of Glassboro State College. Chairman Kosygin had accepted. It was no Yalta nor Geneva but a simple 19th century home near an early American farming settlement. Yet in its own way, a uniquely appropriate setting for the two statesmen who would meet there. Both possessed unimaginable power, yet both were unpretentious, straightforward. Both had sat in the company of kings, yet both understood the language of the farmer and the factory worker. In this simple arena, they would face each other for nearly 10 hours, both becoming, for a brief moment in history, the focal point of a troubled world's hopes and prayers. Chairman Kosygin this morning to talk throughout the day quietly and straightforwardly with him. And I'm glad to say to you that I've found that he came to our meeting in the same spirit. We talked about the problems of the Middle East in detail, and we shall continue to talk about them. We talked about the problems of Southeast Asia. We've talked about the arms race and about the need for new agreements there. We talked about the need for common action on constructive initiatives for peace. We reached no new agreements, uh, almost but not quite, but new agreements are not always reached in a single conversation. So we're going to eat lunch and spend Sunday together again at Hollybush. The first day of the summit talks was over but for the president there was still much work to do. After assuring the thousands of enthusiastic onlookers that the meeting had been a very good and useful one, he bid a momentary goodbye to his historic guest. This was the 25-hour day. He had been on the go since 4.30 in the morning, and he had 5,000 miles and 12 more hours to burn before there would be any rest. It would be difficult to pinpoint any moment in Lyndon Johnson's political career as satisfying as this 23rd day of June, 1967. He had fired the imagination of the public with the sudden bold moves that led to the face-to-face -face encounter at Glassboro. On Sunday, the 25th of June, the president returned to Glassboro. This time, he brought the family. On hand to welcome them back were New Jersey's Governor Richard Hughes and Mrs. Hughes, who had been instrumental in making Holly Bush available.
Some differences between the two statesmen still remain, but nothing could dampen the spirit nor the ardor of the day. The premier was accompanied by his daughter Ludmilla, and for the rest of the day, she would be the special guest of Mrs. Johnson and Linda. As the second day of talks continued, heavy rainstorms lashed the campus, but the thousands who had come to witness history stood their ground. They had talked for more than four hours, delving even deeper into the many questions that separated their two countries. At 6.20 in the evening, they had finished. We have made further progress in an effort to improve our understanding of each other's thinking on a number of questions. I believe more strongly than ever that these have been very good and very useful talks. Premier Kosygin had been visibly touched by the warmth and enthusiasm exhibited by the people of Glassboro. He personally thanked them and saluted friendship between the Soviet and American peoples. These meetings just have not ended our troubles and our dangers, and I cannot promise you that that will not happen again. The world remains a very small and very dangerous, and all nations, even the greatest of them, have very hard and very painful choices ahead of them. What I can tell you, and I have no doubt about it at all, is that it does help a lot to sit down and look a man in the eye all day long and try to reason with him particularly if he is trying to reason with you. And that's why we went to Hollybush this morning. And reasoning together there today was the spirit of Hollybush.